Good evening, everyone. As we prepare ourselves to enter the holy end of Lent and to prepare ourselves for the celebration of Easter, I invite you to stand as we begin by confessing our sins. <clears throat> Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with your whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn. Try the new hymn.
Good evening. Good evening. A first reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided into proportion to the number of people you eat of it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's read together Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the Lord's house. the Lord at all times. Praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For God has been so good to me. Glorify 
glorify the Lord with me. Together, let us all praise God's name. I called the Lord who answered me from all my troubles I was set free worship the Lord all you people you want for nothing if you ask taste and see that the Lord is good in God we need put all our trust taste and see taste and see the goodness of the Lord oh taste and see taste and Thank you, Betsy. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was about to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, so also ought you to wash one another's feet. 
For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, the servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than those who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday morning, my dear wife said to me, would you do me a favor, run to the store and pick up a few things for me? And of course I said, of course, I'd love to. No, I didn't at all. <clears throat> I said, I'll go anyway. So I ran over to Sam's Club and went in the store, picked up the three or four things Helen had on the list. And as I am likely to do any time I'm there, I walked past the bakery aisle. In fairness to me, it was only four aisles away from where I was shopping. Um, and while I was looking over all the goodies, I saw a peach pie. Now, I know it's the wrong season for peach pies, but I saw it and my heart literally melted. <laughs> because when I was a youngster, when my family had moved from New York City to Levittown, we had three fruit trees in our backyard, two apples and a peach. And when anything was ripe, my mother would pull it right off the tree and on Saturday morning, she'd make pies. And she, I think the process was she half baked them, took them out of the oven, let them cool and then stacked them in the freezer. So we would have you know, apple pie for dessert on February 15th or something strange like that. And any time my sister and I were being called on to do extra work, like go shovel the walk in the driveway, when we would come inside, bitter cold days, freezing, my mother would greet us with a cup of hot chocolate and let us know that a fresh peach pie was about to come out of the oven. So to me, a peach pie is not just a thousand calories a slice, which it probably is anyway, but it's also a reminder of my mother's love for my sister and me. And I went home yesterday afternoon, I called my sister and we had a, a big laugh about the whole thing. It's amazing, isn't it, how powerful food is to have us recall something from more decades ago than I'd like to remember? That's why we eat Thanksgiving dinner. We recall what happened. We remember, we tell stories, and we look to the future. Well, the anthropologists and sociologists tell us that these kinds of meals, these kinds of eatings where we think back to what had happened and look ahead in hope are really the foundations of society. These are the ways societies take their central teachings and pass them on to the next generation to keep them alive. And the taste of smell the taste and smell of food just makes these associations all the more powerful. This evening, Pam read the first lesson, which is the story of how to prepare the Passover meal. God gives us everything except the recipes. Um, you know, it is to be a meal of lamb. 
and it was to be butchered in a certain way and the blood of the lamb reserved for a special purpose, painted around the doorposts of the house of every um, Israelite. And by that painting, the Lord would know to have the angel of death pass over that house. Through the years, up until last night, up through last night, our Jewish neighbors have eaten this meal the way God tells them to eat it in the first lesson today. They prepare the lamb in a certain way. They eat unleavened bread to remind them that they didn't have time when they left Egypt to have bread rise. They eat bitter herbs, reminder of the tears of slavery. And while they're eating, someone tells the story according to a well laid out ritual, everything is explained. And year after year, the next generation picks this up and goes back 5,000 years and remembers what God has done and looks forward to the future, believing in the promise of God's salvation. Tonight, just as Pam read in the second lesson, we're going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to recite the story of Monday Thursday, what Jesus did in the upper room at the Last Supper. In that story, we'll remember Jesus' passion, his death, and look forward to his resurrection. And by actually eating bread and drinking wine, we participate in that Last Supper in some way that I can't begin to understand. And yet through that, through that ritual, we are strengthened. We are made more firm in our memory of the past and stronger to look to the future in hope and in faith. These are the only two times in scripture that God demands that we remember. The Jews are required to remember the Passover by eating. Christians are required to remember the death and resurrection of Jesus by eating. In this eating, we strengthen our connection to the past. And with God's assurance, we look ahead with whatever to whatever the future may bring our way. I think the only possible words that can be added to that, Betsy already sang, <laughs> taste and see the goodness of the Lord.
consolate and peace we give as your servants, Lord, in freedom, be your mercy. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You make a new covenant with your people. Gather your church around word and table in love and promise as these three days, holy days, enfold us. Open us to behold the mystery of our salvation. Merciful God, you give us our daily bread, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. Bless those whose labor and tend to their crops and those who prepare our meals. Strengthen us to advocate for food justice and a fair distribution of resources. Merciful God, you, our Savior and teacher, stoop down to us in servant love. Inspire national and local leaders with a renewed sense of public service. Increase in them a humility to serve with equality and fairness. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Merciful God, you incline your ear to us in every need. Befriend all who are lonely. Comfort those who grieve. Soothe any who are anxious. Console all who are distressed. Graciously, graciously tend to the hearts of your children who suffer in mind, body, and spirit. Especially Beverly, Lisa, Eddie, Carol, Don, John, Sharon, Tim, Robin, Maria, Marcy, Aaron, Joan, Elaine, Hannah, Mike, Bill, Mike, Kerry, Mary Lou, Christine, and May. Merciful God, you inspire your people to praise in word and song and art. We give thanks for artists, especially Albert Troyer, Matthias Gunwald, and Lucas Cranach the Elder, whose gifts enrich the church's worship. Kindle in us appreciation for all who beautify our worship space throughout the changing seasons. Merciful God, precious in your sight is the death of your faithful ones. We remember and give thanks for those who have died. With them we trust your promise to love your own until the end. Merciful God, we lift our prayers to you, O God trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole church through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Please share with one another a sign of God's presence among us. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you, Tom. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you, Jim. God's peace be with you, Bob. Peace be with you. Peace the Lord be with you. Peace be with you, Peace be with you, Pam. Thank you for reading.
filled to the brim a cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hosts from the dreams of all, united with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us taste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that we may all know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and delight, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all, all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sins, may be transformed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet for all is now ready. given for you. You lay in the body of Christ given for you. 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 body of Christ given for you. Tom, the body of Christ given for you. Here, the body of Christ given for you. And the body of Christ given for you. John, the body of Christ given for you. Earl, the body of Christ given for you. stand. Let us pray. Lord God, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. 